to solve the question. Uh, first thing first, can you all just reply inside? I know you guys are a little bit shy in re responding normally. Just uh, send me a message inside the chat box. Um, my house is actually, they're having some events outside uh, at the living room. So if you can hear the background sound, uh, do let me know. But I think my mic, all right, my my headset, all right, does actually cancel out their sound and their voices laughing outside already. So um, if it's too noisy, then you let me know. Then I'll try to shift to another place. Right. Okay. All right. So for those who just came in. All right, evening everyone. So we're going to go into term ionic emission right now. Okay, so we're going to enter um, electronic chapter. Okay, um, in electronic chapter, we will first understand regarding term ionic emission. So for the electronic chapter, let me open up the textbook. Okay, so according to the textbook, there is only three subtopics in here. But um, honestly, to tell you, term ionic emission, it's a very, very, to me, it's a little bit abstract comparing to the rest of the chapters because um, we're dealing with electronics, all right? The same electronics that uh, previously was, that we were talking about on semiconductors, all right, that we talk about... Um, how how quantum physics quantum physics is the main reason this electronic chapter uh is being found and also uh it is the very core of our modern modern technologies and our modern lifestyle right now it's electronic parts okay so um even though there's three subtopics so honestly to say we will need three lessons to cover this so we're going to cover electronic electron all right, like uh, five point one electron today. On two days later, we're gonna cover semiconductor diode, and uh, after that, we'll cover transistor in another lesson. All right, so uh, let's start with um electronic uh electrons here. Okay, so wait uh, I'm gonna open up this first. Okay. So let's see. Honestly, if your the background sound is a little bit too loud. Can you hear the living room sounds laughing and all? Just curious to ask. Ada ke tak ada? No. All right, good. Thank you. All right, thank you, Jonathan. So before, I have no idea why they actually call this chapter electrons. Maybe because the whole entire chapter is talking about electrons. Um, last time, it used to be called the term ionic. All right, term ionic. But now they change it to electrons, mainly because electrons is the core of the whole entire subtopic. The main reason electronic is being uh, uh, advancing so much, our technology is advancing so much, is because our ability to understand electrons better. So term ionic emission and cathode ray is the main focus of our lesson today. So um, previously in chapter 3, all right, chapter 3 of electricity, we talked about current. All right, I'm going to use the pointer here. In chapter 3, we talk about current, where current's definition is the rate of flow of charge in the conductor. So in that chapter, we talked that current is the rate of flow of charge. So that's Q over T. So um, when a charge flow, charge flow here, we mainly talk about electrons because, because we have already discussed many times that electrons is uh, more loosely bound to the nucleus, um, it's quite far away from the nucleus, and um, the attractive force can be easily overcome. All right, so when electrons actually flow in a conductor, conductor means a uh, solid matter. All right, so when it flows in a conductor, there will be current flowing. So electric current is produced when charged particles more precisely electrons majority of the particles that uh, the charge that is moving its electron okay but does it mean that uh, positive charges doesn't flow it does later on in the next lesson we'll talk about positive charges flowing all right can 
But the thing right now is previously in chapter three and chapter four, uh, chapter three electricity and chapter four electromagnet, we talk about electrons flowing in the metal, in the conductor itself. But the question here right now is can electron move through vacuum? Move through vacuum means there is um, a blank space, a vast blank space where there's no particles at all. All right, there's no particles in a vacuum area without the presence of conductor. So that's a question that the textbook actually asks us. So, um, so I already added in these notes from my previous uh, one because uh, the textbook is a little bit incomplete in this case. Term ionic emission. For your information, the word term ionic emission, the definition is the process of emission. Emissions means release. All right. Emission means release, the release of electrons from a heated metal surface. All right, the release of electrons from a heated metal surface, but because it says the term ionic emission, so emission is the main focus of our, our the, the physics term that has to be in there. All right, so when a metal surface is heated, heated means there is heat energy. All right, there is heat energy and uh, also known as thermal energy. All right, heat energy and thermal energy. So the energy that is being provided to the metal surface is the one that caused the electrons to be emitted out. Thus, the word term means thermal energy. All right, ionic means electrons. Electrons are negative charges. All right, electrons are negative charges. All right, emissions mean to be released out. So term ionic emission means thermally electrons that is being released. All right, or the process of emission of electrons from a heated metal surface because electron must come from the metal surface. So how does term ionic emission occurs? Term ionic emission occurs, number one, the metal consists of a large number of electrons which are free to move. That's the reason why metal are actually an electric conductor because they are easily to move all over the place. Okay. Now, at room temperature, the electrons are free to move, but they still remain inside the metal. So this is a key word. At normal condition, the electrons will remain inside the metal and it flows inside the conductor itself only. Okay, so we have already learned in quantum physics uh, of photoelectric effect. When electrons, it's actually inside the metal, but when light comes in, electrons is emitted out. So that's called photoelectric effect, all right? The electrons that is being emitted out due to light energy. So term ionic emission is actually the electrons that is emitted out from the metal surface because it received thermal energy, heat energy. Okay, so the electrons cannot escape from the surface because insufficient amount of energy, they are bound by the attractive force from the atomic nucleus, which is positively charged. All right, the protons are all there. So electrons are actually attracted to the protons at the nucleus. All right, so in order to overcome this attractive force, the when the metal is being heated at high temperature, all right, some of the free electrons may gain sufficient energy to escape from the metal. All right, so it's almost similar with photoelectric effect. It's just that photoelectric effect uses light energy to release the electron. Here, they need heat energy to release the electrons. It's almost the same thing. It's just the source of the energy that is absorbed by the electrons is heat energy here. So does that mean that we are going to take a lighter and actually light up the metal. No, actually not. How does it come through from? Okay, let me erase off everything on this slide. All right, how does this come from? It's actually from this picture on the right-hand side here. Now, this is a very simple circuit whereby there is a battery. All right, so this is a direct current source. Okay, so a direct current, the longer one is the positive charge. The smaller one is the negative charge. So current will flow from the positive charge through this filament and then enter back to the negative terminal, all right? That's the direction of current flow. Now, filament is um, 
a metal conductor is a conductor that has high resistance. Okay, so when a current pass through this filament, this filament will actually get heated up. Why? Because high resistance material will actually release a lot of heat. All right, that's how uh, you know our light bulb. Okay, so we have a uh, Let's just say our light bulb. All right. All it has inside there is a uh, metal go in and then there's filament and it comes out. So this filament area, when electricity or current, all right, when current flows through it, it will change from electrical energy. All right. It will change from electric energy to heat energy. and also light energy. So that is how the light bulbs actually get brighter. Okay, so it's the same case over here, but here they do, it will not release out light energy, it just releases out electrons, all right? It will it'll release out the electrons which has absorbed, all right? The electrons that has absorbed heat, okay? it has already gained sufficient energy to escape from the atomic nucleus, to escape the attractive force from the atomic nucleus, allowing them to escape from the metal. Hence the term, term ionic emission, the release of electrons from a heated thermal all right, metal surface. All right, so that I hope that explains to you guys what actually term ionic emission is. Okay, so please do take note uh, because of there's two similar situations where electrons get emitted out from the metal surface. One, term ionic emission. The second one is photoelectric effect. All right, so please make sure that you clarify, able to distinguish, compare, and contrast between term ionic emission and photoelectric effect. Okay, so the only difference is photoelectric effect, the word photo means light. All right, term ionic means thermal heat, heat energy. Okay. So this is how uh, wait, uh, this is actually how term ionic emission is being observed uh, through a cathode ray in a vacuum tube. Now I'm gonna analyze this sentence at the bottom here first. Okay, term ionic emission. Where is my pointer? Okay, my pointer changed to yellow color already. Wait first. All right, term ionic emission means the release. All right, the release of electrons. All right, the ionic here means the electrons due to heat energy and the production of cathode ray. Cathode ray means um, electrons, electron rays. We heard about sun ray before, isn't it? So here it's not sun, it's not light. It is actually electron rays in a vacuum tube. Vacuum tube means there is no other particles inside that. No air particles, no other particles inside there, in short, to say. All right, so here we're going to analyze this vacuum tube. This vacuum tube is actually known as the cathode ray tube. All right, the cathode ray tube. So it's very important that you understand this picture. So I'm going to break down this picture for you. Number one is actually here. We have the first circuit. The first circuit has only six volt power supply. 6 volt power supply that would be only 4 AA size battery. All right, 4 AA size battery. Because one AA battery is only 1.5 volts. So 6 volts that only needs 4 AA size battery. All right. So over here, all right, this power supply here is because there's one long line another shorter line. So here this is actually a positive and negative direct current power supply. Okay, so this direct current power supply is connected to the filament and then back to the negative terminal. Simple circuit only. Now, what's the function of this first circuit? The 6 volt power supply is meant to heat up this tungsten filament. All right, the main purpose of the first circuit is to heat up the tungsten filament to allow electrons to be emitted or to be released. So, which means the first circuit is where term ionic emission happens.
All right. The first circuit is where the term ionic emission happens. So I'm going to consider that as my first circuit. Now, I uh, hope you guys have already written this down because I'm going to erase the rest of the things here first. All right. Here then, after that, we have a second circuit. The second circuit is where EHT power supply. This is our circuit number two. EHT power supply is actually from here, the positive terminal. EHT stands for extremely high tension power supply. Extremely high tension power supply, it's different from the power supply that uh, if you guys recall last year when we were doing the the Ruchka Norway situation, you guys actually use a power supply to light up the uh, ray box. All right. That power supply is not considered as extremely high tension power supply because that power supply maximum voltage was only 12 volts. Extremely high tension power supply voltage is 10,000 volts all the way to, if I'm not wrong, 60,000 volts. All right. 10 kilovolts to 60 kilovolts. That range, la, its maximum range is around there. All right. It's different from the one that you used last year for the ray box because last year the ray box maximum was only 12 volts here is actually 60 kilovolts right 60000 volts so that's why extremely high tension power supply is can only be used by teachers and also for lab assistants okay but then again let's look into this uh explanation again so here again you can see that it's already written a positive and a negative here meaning means this power supply is a direct current power supply how do you know which is uh, direct current, which is uh, alternating current? Direct current, they will directly write positive and negative. If it's an alternating current, they will draw this symbol. All right. The circuit will be like this and they write AC. But this symbol shows it's an alternating current power supply. Okay. This symbol, it looks like a sign, uh, a sign graph that you learn in MS. All right. Because alternating current... Uh, the graph that is being produced is actually a sine graph. So here, all right, this extremely high tension power supply, is, let's follow the, the black line up. Whatever, one note for you guys. Um, next week when we go back to school, what we're going to do next week in school is we're going to be carrying out Form 4 experiment. The second week, that's the most important week that make sure you guys are there because during the second week of uh, January, we are going to carry out all electricity experiments uh, that is in preparation with your Ujan Amali tree that's going to be on uh, end of the month. So over here, this one key that you have to understand, whatever comes up from the positive terminal of the power supply, that line will go to the positive terminal from the apparatus. So from this positive, I go straight. This is an ammeter. Ammeter has a positive and negative terminal. So ammeter... Is supposed to be connected to the positive of the battery so automatically the other side will be negative but this metal over here it doesn't look at the ammeters terminal it looks at the power supply terminal the power supply terminal here is positive so which means this metal is a positive terminal metal all right so that's how we see we analyze it individually based on the power supply all right so this is negative terminal so going up according to the line, it doesn't touch here. And this is the black color line. All right. The filament is actually from the first circuit. It doesn't touch the second circuit, uh, extremely high tension power supply. So this metal surface is actually the negative terminal of the, uh, sorry, it's a negatively charged plate. That's why, because there is power supply. So this is actually called as a cathode. All right. This metal is actually called a cathode. And this surface, because it's connected to the positive terminal of the power supply, is actually known as anode. Don't confuse yourself with the chemistry cathode and anode. Ah. All right. This one has a power supply. So it's the electrolyte All right, cell. All right. So the negative is actually known as cathode and the positive is actually known as anode. Okay. So we're going to explain regarding this. But one more important thing is this word, vacuum. Inside this whole entire glass tube, all right, this blue line, this is actually a glass tube. Inside this glass tube, apart from this filament, uh, tungsten filament, the wire that actually 
touches the cathode and the wire that touches the anode, the rest of it inside here is vacuum. Vacuum meaning means no air particles. All right, there will be no air particles inside here. Okay, so let's start with the first analysis based on your textbook. In your textbook, the first one is actually the green color line. Green color line talks about the first circuit. When there is many free electrons in the metal wire, all right, for example, the tungsten filament, okay, um, there are actually a lot of free electrons moving inside this tungsten uh, filament. So when the power supply is switched on, all right, current will flow from the positive terminal through the tungsten filament back to the negative terminal. So that's current flow. So when temperature is switched on, oh, sorry, when the power supply is switched on, the temperature of the fil uh, tungsten filament will rise. All right. So when switch is on, either the switch or the power supply is on, okay, the temperature will increase. And when the temperature increases, the free electrons will gain sufficient kinetic energy, all right, to leave the metal surface. Okay, the free electrons will gain sufficient kinetic energy to leave the metal surface. But if you recall one thing, um, the the how to say, uh, uh conservation of energy, all right, conservation of energy states that ca energy cannot be created, energy cannot be destroyed. So where on earth? did the electron receive the kinetic energy, all right? Where did the electrons receive the energy in order for it to move out and leave the metal surface? So this energy comes from the electrical energy, all right? The energy actually comes from the electrical energy. And hence, when the electrons is actually released out from the metal surface, when the electrons is released out from the metal surface, that is what we call a term ionic emission, all right? A process where the emission of free electrons are heated from, uh, sorry, the emission of free electrons from a heated metal surface. So here again, emission means the word released, all right? The electrons are released from a heated metal surface. So again, term ionic is thermal heat ions being released out from the metal surface. So here, the meaning of this picture is that when the filament gets heated up, it will become hot, electrons is emitted out. And remember, this metal here is a cathode, all right, which is connected to the negative terminal of the power, extremely high tension power supply. So this metal cathode metal has a lot of electrons, negative charge over there. So the electrons are all here, all right, out from the metal surface of the filament, tung the tungsten filament. So how do we actually improve, all right, how do we actually improve the, the um, number of electrons or how fast the electrons can be emitted out? Is by having the layer of metal, the cathode metal, to have barium oxide, or strontium oxide, which is coated on the metal surface of the cathode in the vacuum, vacuum tube, so that the temperature required to release the electrons will be reduced. This is a modification question part, uh, whereby you want to have more electrons being released, uh, or faster to be released faster, it needs to be coated, the cathode surface needs to be coated with barium oxide, or strontium oxide. So this is the choice. And the bottom part is actually the explanation. All right, so this is actually for term ionic emission. All right, let's go next. The next part is talking about the glass tube, this area here. All right, so the glass vacuum tube, electrons are able to accelerate towards the anode without colliding with air molecules. Now, what does this sentence actually mean? First, when electrons from the first circuit, when a part six volt power supply allows current to flow through the filament, the filament will get heated and electrons will absorb the heat energy and escape out from the 
tungsten filament. So when it escapes out from the tungsten filament, the electrons will all be over here. Now electrons, it's it is when it's being released out, um, it will go all over the place actually. All right. So when there's a second circuit, which is the extremely high tension power supply is there, from the cathode, the negatively charged plate, electrons are negative charged. The cathode is a negatively charged plate. So electrons and cathode is the same charge. Same charges repel each other. But anode is all positively charged because it's connected to the positive terminal of the power supply. And it's extremely high tension power supplies are more. So the electrons that is being released out from the filament will move straight towards the anode. All right. And why do they use the word accelerate in the sentence and not the word move, like what I just did? The main reason accelerating towards the anode is because it's moving very fast. Okay, so let's just imagine um, your, your classroom is actually in block B. All right, so you have gamma, omega, and alpha here. Then after that, we have the copra C here. And then after that, we have the girl's toilet and then the boy's toilet over here. And then the canteen is at this corner. So it is, again, I always use students as electrons, okay? So when I assume students as electrons, okay, sorry, let me. All right, when I actually cook some, uh, why I suddenly say the word cook. All right. When I assume electrons, uh, students as electrons, because it's very easy for you all to understand, you know, the characteristic is almost similar. Now, let's just say um, you guys coming out of the classroom is the term ionic emission or the photoelectric effect. So in this case, it's the term ionic emission. So when you receive amount of energy, which is going to be the bell, all right, the school bells rings, and then you will, all the students will actually come out and you have no idea what you want to eat. So what you will do, you will go towards the Copra Sea and you will see what food is there in the Copra Sea that's selling over there. Then maybe you wait for your friend at the toilet and then after that, then you will go to the canteen and then you will go and check out every single con counter to see what they are selling over there. All right. So you have no sense of direction because there's nothing specific that you want to eat. Okay. So over here, all right, this is the case of um, the first circuit is, co uh, is connected, is switched on electrons is released out from the filament but nothing is attracting the electrons the electrons are free to go because the second circuit is not being switched on but if the second circuit is being switched on second circuit is being switched on the negative terminal the cathode is connected to the negative terminal of the power supply the positive terminal of the uh, power supply is connected to the anode so anode is positively charged, electrons is negatively charged. Because of extremely high tension, the electrons are very strongly attracted towards the anode. It is like the situation whereby you are uh, finding to buy, let's just say, popia. All right? Finding for popia and you want to eat popia. You want to see whether canteen got sell popia or not. So the minute the bell rings, you come out of your class, okay? And instead of going to the corporacy to check whether they are selling anything there, you know corporacy won't sell popia. So you just go directly straight to the counter inside the canteen there. All right. You are strongly attracted because you know that at the left-hand side, most counter, that's where they sell all the small snacks. I'm not sure left or right, lah, okay. They will sell the popia, donuts, or, or the rest of the uh, chicken popcorn or whatever over there. All right. So you will go straight directly to find that counter to see whether you the things that you want to eat is there or not. All right. So when the extremely high tension power supply is connected, electrons will move very fast. And the movement very fast is being explained using the word accelerate. All right. The electrons are accelerating towards the anode. Now, when it accelerates towards the anode, okay, I'm going to erase everything first. All right, when it accelerates towards the anode, it means that it's moving very fast. Normally in uh, school during recess time, is it that 
easy for you to move from your classroom towards the canteen. It's normally very difficult why there are a lot of students coming down at the same timing. So that's the reason why this glass tube is vacuum. All right. Why? Because in vacuum, there is no air molecules. There's no particles over there. When there's no particles, all these electrons that is being emitted out from the filament due to the heated, uh, the heat energy that is released out from the filament, all these electrons will move straight towards the anode without any collision, no collision at all. When there's no collision, meaning means all the electrical energy, all right, all the electric energy that actually gets converted to heat energy at the filament, when it absorbed by the electrons, the heat energy, when it absorbs by the electrons, the electron will start to accelerate. So the, all the heat energy is converted to kinetic energy. All right. So if there are particles, all right, there will be collision. And if there is collision, you would slow down if you are trying to get to the canteen. So the electrons will actually lose energy if there is particles. So that's the reason why it has to be in vacuum. Vacuum has no particles. No particles means no collision. No collision means 100% of the electric energy gets converted to heat energy and 100% of the heat energy got converted to kinetic energy. Okay, so but normally they will just ignore this heat energy. La. They will jump from electrical energy to kinetic energy. One. So that is what it meant by the first sentence. Hence, there is no energy loss and electrons will move with maximum velocity. That's the reason why I have 100% kinetic energy over here. Now, when I mention kinetic energy, which means that kinetic energy formula K equals to half of mv squared. So again, you see this this uh half of mv square over here okay so um that is explaining this part this is number two all right i'm going to go to the next one out already in three two one all right now the third part the third part is actually talking about what is being produced Okay, so the third part is actually the movements of the electrons. And if you can see here right now, they call this as electron beam. All right, so when the vacuum tube is connected to an extremely high tension power supply, the electrons emitted from the cathode, all right, will be attracted to the anode at high velocity. Now, let me highlight one keyword. Electrons emitted from the cathode is attracted to the anode at high velocity. So that is how it formed the electron beam. So this high velocity electron beam is known as cathode ray. Electrons that is emitted from the cathode moving at high velocity. So that's the meaning of cathode ray. The definition is here. High velocity electron beam. So the electron beam will complete the extremely high tension power supply circuit. Why? Okay, now let's look back. Um, previously, we talked in chapter 1 and chapter 2. In order, when we have a power supply, let's just say connected to just the emitter, because here you got emitter. Ma. All right, emitter over here. Current will be able to flow from the positive to the negative because the emitter, uh, this is a complete circuit. But if, let's just say one thing right now, this is the power supply, and then here there's an empty space, you know. There's an empty space over here, connected to the amp meter, and then connected back to the negative terminal of the battery. So here, no current will flow, all right? If this is a light bulb instead of amp meter, it will not be on, all right? But for this circuit on the left, the light bulb will be on, all right? It will light up. Why here doesn't on? Because it, there's no connection here. All right. Unless one thing, unless the electrons can move from here towards, uh, sorry, from this side, from the negative side towards the positive side, electron can flow through. Then only current can flow through. Because current definition 
is the rate of flow of charge in the conductor. So over here, between cathode and anode is vacuum. All right. If it's vacuum, no electrons or no charges, there is no metal that connects these two. So here, the electron beam, when it's released out from the filament, the electrons will accelerate towards the anode because it is attracted to the positive terminal. All right. When the electrons move from the cathode to the anode, electrons moving, ma, when there's an electron, it is a negative charge. So when it's moved, when electron move from the negative terminal to the positive terminal, then current will flow from the positive to negative. All right. So this means that when there is a charge flowing, the electron beam will complete the extremely high tension power supply circuit, which I call it the second circuit. And the milliammeter reading will show the current is flowing. Milliammeter meaning means the amount of current that flows is actually very, very small. All right. Milliammeter is actually 0, 0.00 decicenti milli, one ampere like that. All right, so it's very, very small, the amount of current. That's why it uses a milliammeter. It needs to be a very sensitive emitter. Okay, so if the connection of the extremely high tension power supply is reversed, the milliammeter will not show any reading. Why is that? Okay, so I'm going to erase all this first. Now, why when the extremely high tension voltage is on the opposite direction, there is no reading on the milliammeter. So let's look back at this circuit. Huh? When this is positive, here is negative. All right, this terminal, they said only the extremely high tension power supply. Ma. So over here, the power supply still remains. So current will flow from positive towards the negative, causing the filament to be heated up and then electrons to be emitted out due to term ionic emission. But one thing, can they, if the electrons can move from this surface, this metal to the right-hand side metal, then there's current flow. But if you look at the extremely high tension power supply right now, this is positive. So the metal that is connected to the positive terminal, which is this, all this will be positively charged. The negative terminal of the power, extremely high tension power supply is connected to this metal. So all out here is negatively charged. All right. This gap is probably about a 10 centimeter gap like that. So it's very difficult for the electrons to jump on its own one, you know. So the electrons that keeps admitted, all right, that is uh, released out by the metal surface at the filament keeps on attracted towards the positive terminal of the power supply. No electrons will flow over here. So when no electrons flow between the, neg the positive metal and negative metal, this is not a complete circuit already. Ma. When the circuit is not complete, then the emitter will not show any reading at all. Okay, so this is what it meant by the last point. If the connection of the extremely high tension power supply is reversed, mini emitter will not show any reading. So here, the graph below shows a graph of currents against voltage for term ionic diode. Diode we will learn in the next subtopic, which is going to be two days later. So this shows that term ionic diode is a non-ohmic conductor. All right. Again, recalling recalling what is non-ohmic conductor. Ohmic conductor, all right, ohmic conductor will obey Ohm's law, which is potential difference is directly proportional to the current. So if you draw a graph of current against potential difference or potential difference against current, it should be a straight directly proportional line. But when they plot current against potential difference, they get a curve. So that's the reason why term ionic diodes are non-ohmic conductors. Okay, so I hope this clarifies.
Okay, now let's go next. This one is something that I added in on myself. All right, so you know, let me adjust my... Okay. Sorry, I uh, need to get some. Okay. So over here, all right, this is something I add in. Because inside the textbook, it just says that um, cathode rays are beams of electrons moving at high speed in vacuum. Even if you don't write vacuum and you write just beams of electrons moving at high speed. So this one is still considered to be correct. Okay. So now cathode ray. All right, term ionic emission, all right, the emission of electrons due to heat, heated metal surface, can be used to produce a continuous flow of electrons in a cathode ray. Because it is a continuous flow, all right, that's why they call it rays and beams. But there are something more, okay? So when the cathode is connected to the anode, all right, cathode is connected to the anode by an extremely high tension voltage supply power supply a narrow beam of fast moving electrons will move all right towards the anode it will accelerate towards the anode so the beam of electrons moving from the cathode to the anode are known as cathode ray because it's a narrow fast electron all right narrow beam of fast moving electrons so that's why the term cathode ray so cathode ray can be used in picture tube television, right? The olden days TV, not the olden days, but not very old, lah. Um, probably 10 years ago, all right? Before the LCD TVs, the plasma TVs are very popular, all right? They actually use a cathode ray uh, television, all right? A cathode ray oscilloscopes or what we know, what I call as a CRO, is the machine that they normally use in the hospital, all right? Whereby, uh, when they connect it to the person's uh pulse at the palm here, or connect it towards the neck or the body, you can see the the pulsing image, all right? That's actually a cathode ray oscilloscope, and a visual display of the radar screen, all right? Um, that is actually at the wait uh, okay, that is actually at the the ships are. Uh, or more towards the military sites or um, the big ships, okay? So what are the properties of cathode ray? Cathode rays are negatively charged particles called electrons, all right? That's the reason why the subtopic was called electrons. So because of the word ray, it is actually traveling in a straight line or else the electrons will move freely, randomly all over the place trying to find for the positive terminal. Okay, but because of the extremely high tension power supply, it moves in a straight line and they can cast sharp shadow. Later, I'll show you how does it look like. And it travels at a very high speed and have high kinetic energy. This can cause fluorescence. All right, fluorescence is actually a process where the kinetic energy of the electrons is converted to light energy. Right, the kinetic energy of the electrons is converted to light energy. So if you recall back the concept that I taught you guys in quantum physics, so you know that um, energy can be, uh, can be created and it actually releases out light. That's how we get our uh, laser pointers, all right? our uh, infrared. All right? So because cathode rays are electrons, which is negatively charged, it is obviously defected by electric field. So it will be attracted towards the positive terminal and it is also deflected which means affected by magnetic field which means that when i bring a magnet along all right near towards this cathode ray it will be influenced by that how are we going to determine using fleming left hand rule why fleming left hand rule because if you recall the analysis that i taught you guys last week fleming left hand rule we use it when um, there is power supply and there's charge flowing. So what is the charge flowing right now? Electrons. Electrons are negatively charged. So we use Fleming left-hand rule to determine where the electrons will move after it interacts with magnet. Okay, that one we will explain in a short while. Okay, now 
According to your textbook, there is two activities of how we investigate the electron beam, all right, the cathode ray, in the Maltese cross tube. Why Maltese cross tube? All right, because the middle here, the middle here, this is a Maltese cross. Okay, so one is a Maltese cross, the other one would be uh deflection electric field so they are trying to analyze that okay with uh let me just take out my simulation for a while and let it run background first okay so this is uh when you see this cross this is actually a Baltic cross Okay, so here, as you can see, what circuit do we have? You have to understand this circuit first. Now, this circuit is similar to what I explained just now. We have a first circuit, which is connected to the 6-volt power supply. We have the second circuit down here, which is connected to the extremely high-tension power supply. Negative is connected to the cathode. Positive is connected to the anode. And look at this line. There is another line towards the Maltese cross. Okay, so there is two lines, which means the Maltese cross was already positively charged. Okay, so what happens here? When switch S1 is closed, the current will flow from positive terminal passing through the filament towards the negative terminal. And when current flows, this filament will get heated up and electrons will gain sufficient energy to escape from the metal surface. When it escapes from the metal surface, all right, second, the second circuit is the extremely high tension power supply. Should the switch be closed, all right, the current will flow from positive and then negative part. But here, in order for the current to fully flow, the electrons, because this is negative connected to the negative terminal of the power supply this metal is negatively charged and electrons that is emitted out from the filament when it's received by the cathode which is negatively charged it will be repelled but it is attracted to the positively charged anode why is it positively charged because it's connected to the positive terminal of the power supply so the electrons are accelerated towards the anode when it accelerates towards the anode, it will continue to move forward. All right, it will continue to move forward in a straight line. And when it hits this Maltese cross tube, it will, most of the electrons will be absorbed, all right, by the Maltese cross. So it will actually cast a dark shadow on the Maltese cross. So if the electrons is released as well, they will show a green color shadow. All right, wait, ah, uh, my simulation is already open. Let me switch it. Uh, let me just click it on for a while. Where is my Maltese cross? Okay. So again, I have to let it run for a while. Okay, so let's see what we have in our notes first while I'm having my simulation running up. Okay, so first thing first, this is actually in your textbook. All right, you have to find somewhere in your textbook they have the analysis here. Um, the top analysis is for the, if I'm not wrong, should be for the Maltese cross. Lah. Okay, you have to find the apparatus, which is actually the Maltese. All right, the Maltese cross one. Okay, now my Maltese cross is really up and running. So I'm going to show you this. All right, this is a simulation of a Maltese cross. Um, what happens here is, okay, if there's no Maltese cross, okay, the electron beams that formed is actually green in color. Why? Because the screen is actually covered with a certain material that when electron beam hits that uh, chemical, it will actually cause fluorescent effect. So over here, all right, if the Maltese cross is 
placed in front of the cathode beam, the electron beams, all right, it will the electrons will be absorbed by the multis cross, casting a very dark shadow. All right, but you can see at the side here there are green color fluorescent light. This green color fluorescent light is the electron hitting the material to convert kinetic energy to uh, light energy. All right, so this is a multis cross tube. Okay, so over here when switch S1 is on, now please do remember, take note, we have two circuits, circuit number one, which is the six volt power supply and circuit number two, the extremely high tension power supply. So S1 is at the first circuit, S2 is actually at the second circuit. So when switch S1 is turned on, which means switch S2 is off. If it's off, which means there is no extremely high tension power supply over there. So when that there is no extremely high tension power supply, the the circuit circuit one, all right, current will flow through the six volt power supply, heating up the filament, all right, the tungsten filament, and electron will absorb the heat energy and be released out from the metal surface. But one thing, the extremely high tension power supply is not on. If it's not on, which means the cathode and the anode, there's no charges over there. So what happens is the electrons is free to move all over the place. When the electrons is free to move all over the place, light from the hot tungsten filament is blocked by the opaque object, by this particular multi-screw uh, cross, to form a shadow. The light travels in a, continue travels in a straight line, but there's no fluorescent effect. Okay, there's no fluorescent effect. Now, um, the bottom part here is actually a note that I add in. Okay, there's a dark shadow on the multi cross formed on the screen. All right, so because the six volt power supply is switched on, the filament is heated, electrons are being released from the heated metal surface. But the multi cross shadow is formed on the screen due to the light from the filament. The electrons are being released out, but the problem is the electrons are not accelerated. They don't have maximum kinetic energy. Okay, so the second part is when switch S1, all right, switch S1 is turned on, S2 is turned on also. So when switch 1 is turned on, current flows through the 6 volt power supply, filament gets heated, electrons get released out from the heated metal surface now second circuit is on also which means cathode is negatively charged anode is positively charged and is also connected to the multis cross so electrons will accelerate through the anode towards the multis cross and the balance will hit the fluorescent screen so what you will see is like this this is different from what we saw just now all right this is yellow color plain white color actually but this is green the side is actually green in color why get the cathode ray is blocked by the multis cross to form a dark shadow this one okay the cathode rays are produced uh it will produce a fluorescent effect on the screen surrounding the shadow that's why we see the green color light now this actually shows that cathode ray possesses momentum and kinetic energy please highlight this all right. This actually meant that if we want to say that how to prove that cathode ray possesses momentum and kinetic energy is the fluorescent effect on the screen in the multis cross tube. So um, in order to further explain even much clearer, what do we see from the observation? A dark shadow of the multis cross is seen in the middle of the screen and is surrounded by green color light. So a proper explanation, a more detailed explanation, is when extremely high tension power supply is switched on, a high voltage is applied between the cathode and the anode, causing the electrons to accelerate. So this is what I explained just now. Then the cathode ray blocked by the multis cross, causing a shadow to form the screen. Okay, And then the green screen formed around the shadow. When the extremely high tension power supply is switched on, showing that all the kinetic energy is converted to light energy when the electron hits 
the fluorescent uh, the fluorescent screen. All right. When the kinetic energy is converted to light energy, then only you get this fluorescent effect. All right. So if it's not accelerated, the electrons that does not possess the maximum kinetic energy, when it hits the fluorescent screen, it will not have that green light effect. All right. Only when the electron has maximum kinetic energy, maximum velocity, when it hits that fluorescent screen, it will have that green light effect around the shadow. All right. So please do take note. Now, this is the second part, the third part. Third part is if we put a magnet close to it. All right. So when the magnet is placed near the Maltese cross tube like this, all right, we know the effect already. Without the magnet, okay, let's see. Without the magnet, we'll have a dark shadow with a green color fluorescent. Uh, All right, without the magnet, there's a green color uh, fluorescent light that is actually covering the dark shadow. But if I place a magnet over there, when I place a magnet, and this is north of the magnet, we see there's double shadow. You know? One is the top one, and then another one at the bottom. All right, the top one is actually the one with the yellow color one, which has the darker one. Another one moved downwards already. All right, so what actually happened? We see two shadows on the screen. All right, the light shadow remained at the center of the screen while the darker one is being shifted downwards. All right, so what does this actually mean? One shadow is actually the light from the hot tungsten filament. The other shadow is due to the deflection of the cathode ray, the electron ray, by the bar magnet placed near the tube. So the deflection of the cathode ray can be determined by Fleming left-hand rule. So how are how come it goes to the bottom? Now this is what we are going to analyze right now. So I hope that you have a paper and pen with you, all right? Because you need to draw it together with me. Okay. So now Fleming left-hand rule. Fleming left-hand rule means we're going to use force, magnetic field, current. Now, the thumb will point towards the direction where the conductor is moving. But here, there's no conductor. There's just the electron beam. Our pointing finger will pop from, point from north towards the south. All right, The magnetic field direction is towards the south. And then our middle finger is actually pointing the direction of the current from positive to negative. Now, let's see. Eh, where's my pointer again? Okay. Now, over here, if I were to look at the Maltese cross tube from the front view, what will I see? I will see electrons. All right. Electrons moving towards the Maltese cross or towards the fluorescent screen. Okay, but please be aware, our Fleming left-hand rule for the current is actually the I, FBI. I is pointing towards the current, all right? Current pointing the direction of the current. Current always flow from positive terminal towards negative terminal. This is the direction of current flow. Current flow because there is charge moving and that charge is electron electron move from the negative terminal towards the positive terminal. So in conclusion, current and electrons flow in the opposite direction. Okay? So if... Where's my pointer again? If the electrons is moving towards the screen, the arrow is pointing towards the screen, that means my current is actually the opposite direction from the screen. This is my direction of current flow. And if I draw, this is my Maltese cross tube. The current right now, this purple color line, 
all right i'm looking that it's pointing over there but i'm looking from the front view from this view so i see the end of the arrow so i will see a cross okay i will see a cross which means the current is actually moving from the screen towards the filament area okay so then after that magnetic field the magnet bar north pole is pointing here although yes the other side is actually south pole okay but the magnetic field will come out from the north all right so this is the direction of our magnetic field obviously yala this is south over here ma but the current is going like that okay but for the middle line here because this place is beside beside the maltese cross like this the magnetic field is actually moving like this away from the north pole okay so if it's moving away from the north pole this is my cross so i hope that you draw this image draw this image onto your paper right now all right draw a circle draw a cross in the middle and then point the arrow for the magnetic field towards the right hand side and take out your flaming left hand rule all right so first thing first i always use to find the direction of magnetic field so i'm looking at my screen right now my magnetic field is pointing towards my right um my direction this is right hand side okay so the magnetic field is pointing towards the right my middle finger is pointing into the paper all right into the screen so the force the thumb is actually pointing towards me so when it's pointing towards me it means that the direction of the force is here downwards that's the reason why the shadow moved down all right the shadow actually shifted downwards this is how we use to determine the deflection of the cathode ray using fleming left hand rule can i know up to here anyone have any question Ada soalan ke? Are you guys okay? No one responds. Huh? Okay. All right. Let me erase everything off. Um, I'm going to repeat on how to determine the direction of the magnetic field. Ah. Okay. Teacher, the thumb is the force, then the second finger. F, B, I. Force, B is magnetic field, I is current. All right, F, B, I, F, B, I. Okay, force, magnetic field, current. Okay, so I'm going to explain again regarding uh, how does the shadow get, there's another shadow at the bottom part, okay? Okay, so again, we are going to look at the Maltese cross from here. So when I look at the Maltese cross, this is the tube, okay? Now, the electrons is actually moving from the cathode, uh, sorry, from the filament, all right, away from the cathode, repelled by the cathode, towards the anode, and hits the Maltese cross, and obviously it will hit the fluorescent screen. So that is the direction of electron flow. But the thing is, if you have a negative terminal, and a positive terminal at battery, all right, connected to an external circuit, electrons from the negative terminal will move towards the positive terminal. That is the direction of charge flowing. The negative charge, which is electron, is moving from the negative terminal towards the positive terminal. Now you see the electrons is moving from this cathode area towards the screen. But current actually flows from positive towards negative that's the direction of current flow current will flow from positive to negative so in conclusion to say electrons and current they flow in opposite direction electron flows to positive current flows to negative so in the multi cross tube electrons is actually moving from the cathode towards the anode towards the multi cross tube and then finally to the screen so my current direction should be the opposite direction 
So if it's the opposite direction, we are not looking at the electron direction already, uh, we're talking about the current because our Fleming left hand rule, the middle finger points towards the direction of the current. So because the direction is pointing towards the anode or the Maltese cross, what when I look at when we look from the front, all right, we will see the back of the arrow. The back of the arrow is the cross. All right, the back of the arrow is the cross. And then we put a magnet, all right? We put a magnet beside the Maltese cross tube. Magnetic field will come out from the north and it will enter the south pole. So assuming there's a south somewhere here, okay? So the magnetic field will come out from the south pole. So when we look at this front view, the magnetic field is towards the right. All right, this is the magnetic field. Because the current is uh, the north is actually pointing uh, at the side here, the magnetic field is coming out from the north. So using the Fleming left hand rule, FBI, B pointing towards the right, and then the current is pointing into the paper. All right, draw that, draw this picture, and you will see it pointing into the paper. Because when you see across, you're supposed to see the back of your palm. All right, so that's the current entering. And our thumb will show the direction of the cathode ray. It will move downwards. So which means that the cathode ray, all right, will move the Maltese cross. You see the green color, green color uh, effect has already moved down. It's because the force is moving downwards. Okay, so that's the reason why the fluorescent, the green fluorescent uh, with a dark shadow actually move downwards. Because according to Fleming left hand rule, that electron beam has already been attracted downwards. It has deflected downwards. Okay? Are you guys okay with that? Hopefully, yeah. Okay. So let's go to the next slide. All right, next slide is actually almost similar, but instead of the Maltese tube right now, it is a deflection plate. All right, if you see I scribble something, it's because I'm trying to find for my pointer. All right, I'm trying to find for my, my, my laser pointer here. Now, so the same thing, we have circuit number one, circuit number two, but instead of a Maltese cross right now, we have a deflection plate. Deflection plate, we have the third circuit. You see, there's another extremely high tension. This is different from the second one. Okay, so this is the third circuit where the extremely high tension power supply, my guess is the power supply is less than the second circuit. Uh. So there is, sorry, uh, here there is positive terminal, here is negative terminal. So the plate connected to the positive terminal of the power supply is positively charged. The plate that is connected to the negative terminal of the power supply is negatively charged. Electron beams are negative charged. So when the electron beams get shoot passing through this positive and negative plate, they will electrons will be attracted towards the positive plate. So if there's a screen over there, the electrons will actually be shifted upwards. Okay, because why it is attracted to the positive terminal and repelled by the negative terminal. So this is actually what explained in your textbook. Switch S1 is on, meaning means current flow in the circuit one. Electrons, uh, the filament gets heated up. Electrons is emitted out from the heated metal surface. Switch S2 is on, meaning means that the extremely high tension power supply connected anode and cathode will cause these electrons to accelerate straight forward to create a cathode ray. All right, so the extremely high tension power supply main purpose is to create the cathode ray. Then when it gets to the third power supply, third power supply is off. They only said S1 and S2 turn on. So if the third power supply is off, all right, the circuit is not complete, the current that flows through is going to be a straight line only. It will just move past a straight line. All right? It will just move past and cause a straight line. That's all. But if S3 is turned on, if S3 is turned on, this is positively charged at the top. 
negatively charged at the bottom. Cathode ray are negative charged electrons, meaning means that the electrons will actually be deflected upwards. That's the reason why it gets deflected upwards when there's a positive here. Because this positive means that this metal surface is connected to the positive terminal of the third extremely high tension power supply circuit. But if the terminal is being switched, the top is negative, which means this is connected to the negative terminal, and the bottom one is connected to the positive terminal, then the electron beams will get deflected downwards. Okay, so they will move in a parabolic path. Parabolic means partially, partial round path. Okay, so this experiment shows that cathode rays are negatively charged because they are attracted towards the positive terminal. Okay, so this is talking about the multi cross and also the deflection beam. Okay, next we are going to go into the uh, this one I'm not going to mention much already. Okay, fluorescent screen is something that I add in. Now, fluorescent screen characteristic. Fluorescent screen is coated on the inside surface of the glass with some fluorescent material such as phosphor or zinc sulfide. All right. So when the electron beam strikes the screen, the material will start to glow. Why? Because the electrons, all right, all right, the electrons have kinetic energy. So when the electron strikes the screen, the fluorescent coating will, the electrons will actually be um, uh, absorbed by the phosphor and zinc sulfide, and it actually converts the kinetic energy of the electrons to light energy. That's how it causes the fluorescent effect. So application of CRO, cathode ray oscilloscope, is to display waveforms and measuring voltage from a direct current source using a CRO. So how does it measure? CRO is like this, not like this. It'll move up and down. Okay. It can also look like this in a zigzag form. It can also have like this. Or it can be like this. Very familiar, right? This is actually the how the hospital actually measure the pulse of a person. Okay. Now, um, it is also used to measure the potential difference using cathode ray oscilloscope, and we can also measure short, short time intervals. So I'm not going to emphasize on this part. All right. Now, the television before the we have what we have right now, the flat screen TVs, the plasma TVs, the LCD TVs. Previously, we have this cathode ray tube. All right, you would probably seen this when you were small, um, probably in primary, uh, kindergarten, that particular stage. So when you actually switch on the old TV, initially what you see is a very sharp green color light in the middle. All right, you'll see a very sharp green color light in the middle at the center of the dot, and then it will expand out to show out the screen. But then, when you want to switch it off, everything from the screen will actually zoom into one single green color dot, then only that green color dot disappear. Why? Because inside of all this bulky, older version television, they actually use a cathode ray. They actually use electron beams to produce that. All right? But because of our understanding of electrons, uh, semiconductors and all that, that actually causes us to create even slimmer uh, versions of the televisions uh, that's plasma and LCD television. So our whole entire modern world is actually based on this particular chapter, all right, electronics. Now, um, please do take note, this is the, the, the last part of the subtopic and also the last part of our lesson today. This is the first time after many, many years this formula appeared, all right, in the chapter of electronics. So please do take note, okay? Because previously we don't measure the calculation of uh, the electrons' velocity and everything. Now, okay, so over here, all right, the velocity of the electron in the cathode ray tube, because the cathode ray is in a vacuum tube, which means there is no other particles inside that. 
All right, there's no other particles inside there, but the electrons that is being emitted out, it will actually move towards the anode, provided that the extremely high tension power supply is on. So in terms of energy, all right, conservation of energy, we have energy, we know that energy is never created, it's never destroyed. So we have the initial energy. Where did the initial energy come from? The initial energy, electrons, when it's emitted out, it um it has already used up the energy to overcome the attractive force from the nucleus. So in order for it to accelerate, to move from the cathode towards the anode, it is actually the energy comes from electrical energy. So the initial energy is electrical energy, electric energy. And electric energy, how do we get that? We actually, this formula comes from the first few formula of chapter 3. Potential difference equals to the work done to carry one column of charge from one point to another point. All right, this formula comes from here, okay? originated from here. And I previously always tell you guys, work and energy can always be interchanged. Why? In order to do work, you need energy. All right? In order to do work, you need energy. That's why work and energy has the same unit. Now, the charge that we're talking about in this whole entire chapter is electron. All right? That's why the subtopic is named electrons. All right? So instead of writing Q, I write small e that is representing electron so if i rearrange this formula electrical energy is ev and do you notice something about this ev we did calculation in quantum physics and in nuclear physics ev stands for electron volts electron volts is the electrical energy all right so one ev equivalent to the amount like okay i don't remember the amount right now okay so here Capital E stands for electrical potential energy. Small e stands for the charge of an electron. Capital V stands for the potential difference between the cathode and the anode from the extremely high tension power supply. Not from the 6 volt, uh, from the extremely high tension power supply. Please do take note. The potential difference between cathode and anode from the extremely high tension power supply not from the 6 volt. The charge of the electron is 1.6 times 10 power of negative 19 column. This one should be already in page 2 and page 3 for paper 1 and paper three, uh, 2. All right. So that is the initial energy. It comes from the electrical energy from the EHT power supply. Now, what about the electrons? Okay. So the electrons right now, once it has absorbed, the electrons that is emitted out due to term ionic emission, it is actually, when it receives the electrical energy, it will actually accelerate forward with high kinetic energy. So kinetic energy formula is half of mv squared. All right. So the final energy is actually kinetic energy so kinetic energy formula k equals to half of m small v squared so over here energy cannot be created it cannot be destroyed hence initial energy which happens to be electrical energy which happens to be ev equals to the final energy which is the kinetic energy, and kinetic energy is half of mv squared. So you manipulate this equation based on what the question gives you to find the velocity of the electron. Capital V is the potential difference of the extremely high tension power supply. Small e is the charge of an electron, which is 1.6 times 10 power of negative 19. Mass is the mass of the electron, which is 9.11 times 10 to the power of negative 31 kg. You find for V, lo. so which means what you need? You need to know how much is the value of the potential difference. Okay, 
So that is what explains. Now, what assumption did we do when we calculated this conservation of energy? When we actually applied the conservation of energy, we assumed that all electrical potential energy is converted to maximum kinetic energy. So what is the assumption? The assumption is that no air molecules in the vacuum tube, right? There's no air molecules in the vacuum tube. So the electrical energy provided by the EHT power supply is fully absorbed by the electron to accelerate forward with maximum kinetic energy. Why no air molecules? Because I already explained just now. When there's no air molecules, when the electrons accelerate, without any collision without any collision meaning means no energy loss all right no energy is lost from the collision so that's how the electrons can achieve maximum velocity so this is the assumption made when we apply the principle of conservation of energy so this is a very important keyword all right so um with this, actually, we end uh, this particular uh, this particular subtopic already for term ionic emission. So, for term ionic emission, do you have any other questions that you want to ask me? Ada soalan? Yeah.